fiends, friends, and familiars. This is Matt Orozco from Macabre Daily, and I am beyond excited to be joined by two filmmakers who are responsible for an amazing witch possession film called Beazle, which will be coming out in theaters on September 20th, and then uh, VOD on September 24th. So I'm here with co-writers Aaron Fradkin and Victoria Fratz Fradkin. And Victoria, you were in the film. Aaron, you directed the film. So thank you both so much for being here with me today. Oh, thank, thank you, for you having so us. much for having us. Yeah, well, I know we don't have too much time, so I'm going to dive right into the questions. Um, as I mentioned in the small intro there, huge fan of this movie, just finished it today. Um, so much fun. So congratulations on an amazing, amazing film. And I'm just curious to know where how you both came up with the idea for Beazle. Mm -hmm. So this movie, believe it or not, was shot in my childhood home. This is, uh, we actually shot at the, in the house that I grew up in. And this is a house that we moved into in 1994 when I was six years old. So really, this is the genesis of, of Beazle. Uh, <laughs> so it all started. Oh, as you can tell, I mean, this is a, it's a really terrifying home. You don't even realize as a kid how scary it is until you invite friends over or your wife over and they tell you this house is haunted. Uh, but my bedroom, you know, is was situated right above the uh, basement. And inside the basement was this old boiler and it would always make all these noises. And right next to that was this crawl space that extended the length of the house. And I would go inside that crawl space sometimes as a kid with friends. I would never go in if I was just by myself. Uh, but it was pretty easy to just draw from a lot of these childhood memories and fears that I had uh, when we were writing Beazle. That is really how it began. Mm -hmm. And the house is just a blessing that just, it's the gift that keeps on giving. Uh, we knew every nook and cranny. And so we were able to conjure up all of these story ideas based on what we knew we had access to. Love that. Um, it's such a cool, interesting kind of approach you all take to with the three different periods of time and how that's shown and some really great visual tricks, right? I think especially the crawl space one that kind of changes time is such a cool effect. Um, so I could definitely attest to having stayed in some creepy houses in my childhood. Um, I think it's just the, it's the design aesthetic, really. It just, it looks uninviting, whereas now we're used to this very minimalist kind of, you know, uh, beige, if you will. I think it's the stone that makes it creepy. <laughs> yeah, like the mixture of materials like wood, stone, you know, cement all together. It's just kind of it's kind of out there. But um, are there any ideas that you all were thinking of in the creative process, whether you were writing or as you were filming that you had to take out um, that you wish you could bring back in? Mm -hmm. Well, that's a great question. That is a good question. I think I mean, the answer is yes, because I, I do know that we went through probably 10 iterations of just about yeah. every uh, sequence in the film yeah so I know there were a lot of ideas that we thought were brilliant one day and then the next yeah. day we we're like these are absolute <laughs> garbage and we just tossed them or the you know something I think is really that I'm a, I'm a big dreamer and Aaron is to be grounded no I'm just kidding you know, but you know, he, he's a very realistic person with what the resources that we have so that's something where we might have written a scene that was just a little bit too too much for what we'd have exceeds the resources that we had access to. And he's really, really dialed at knowing our resources, knowing what we have access to, and then how can we make that look absolutely incredible? Not like we're stretched thin. So I'm gonna keep thinking of if we have some exact like story ideas that didn't get make the cut. Yeah. But you know, I think that also just as writers, especially writers that we do a lot of short films on, on lean budgets, we've kind of dialed ourselves to just do the best we can within those parameters. So we, we might have we might have kept ourselves within the the bunkers this time. Sure. No, I think it's a great <laughs> lesson though to to um, put yourself in a box sometimes. Right. Uh, as Victoria said, it really forces you to come up with creative solutions for yeah. things that are oftentimes way better than what <laughs> it would have been had you had you know all the money and resources in the world. Right. I mean, they say, "No, what is it? Necessity is the mother of invention." Yeah. Um, but I also think sometimes restriction is the mother of creation. So it's kind of like it gives you this box to play in where you know your parameters, but you also kind of have to create around it. And yeah. speaking of creating, you know, I know you both have a lot of experience kind of in the in in not just the short film world, but also in the horror creating world with Social House Films, which is an amazing YouTube channel. People should go check out with great content on there. Um, how did you come up with the idea for the look of Beazle herself? So interesting, so creepy. Well, I have to give uh, credit to Victoria. She really spearheaded the uh, the creature design. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I, when you think about Bezel, you know, we as writers want to do, understand her lore, regardless of how much of that lore seeps into the story. You know, we try and give some breadcrumbs here and there, but we as the writers do know what her backstory is. And so, you know, we knew she was an ancient being probably as, as done, you know, intertwined with, with the demonic forces, the devil itself. And um, when we we're thinking about her creation, it was like, okay, what else is ancient? What else has been around since forever? You know, trees, trees are very gnarled and, and twisted. And so she's, she really does pull, draw from gnarled tree branches for her design. Um, and then one thing I really liked is that she, she is a blind witch and she's blind because, you know, your soft tissues are some of the first things to go over time. So I huh. think that having no eyes and she doesn't even need functioning eyes with all of her abilities. Uh, that was another element or look, but it all made sense for who she was, where she came from and what she can do. So that was the package. In, in the script, we actually describe the tree branches and the trees in oh, the yeah. area as being witchy trees. Witchy trees. <laughs> and our, he looked at me and he was like, witchy trees? And I was like, we'll find them. Yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> Trust me, you can get it, right? It makes sense, right? Yeah. Pa pa right. Page to brain, totally good. Right. Um, yeah. January or February, every tree in New England is witchy. <laughs> the witchy tree. Yeah, I'm here in Ohio, so we're in the process of watching our, our trees shed their leaves and start to look far creepier than <laughs> they normally do. Different. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, I, uh, you know, I, it's funny you mentioned the tree thing because there's a moment where you see, you know, a great shot of, um, you actually, Victoria, like looking under the bed, right. And you see those feet and the way they move are almost branch like, and kind of the way they set to themselves. So amazing stuff. Uh, and it just shows how much thought I think you all put into this, that even if it doesn't, if it isn't on that screen, right, you all had an idea of what you're going for. Um, and I'm curious to know, you know, you, you both working together on this, you know, what is your process like? I know you kind of mentioned, Victoria, you're kind of the dreamer and Aaron's a little bit more of the grounded <laughs> person, but I guess, how does that ebb and flow work in terms of your creative process? So when we, when we write together, which we do most of the time, we sort of assign what we call a captain to a project, <laughs> uh, because Bezel is, if you really think about, if you break it down, it's really three different projects in one. There's kind of three acts all in one. Um, we each became the captain of a different script. And so I would write a portion of the movie and then give that to Victoria to workshop. She would write a portion of the movie and then give that to me to workshop. And no matter how painful it may be, we will just keep on bouncing ideas, shooting ideas down, uh, you know, off of each other until it is just boiled down to something that we both absolutely love. Mm -hmm. And I think that's just a great, you know, testament to, um, or it's really just a great way to get the nugget of, of a scene is you both have to agree on something. If you don't agree there, it could, it, there's, it's very likely that there's a way to make it better. Agreed. And that, that also lends um, an element of having fresh eyes to, to a script. Because if you're a writer, even co-writing team, and you've been toiling over a, a complete story feature, you might not see things because you're just, you've seen, you've been reading it every you're single day and workshopping it every single day. So I always found it like to be almost like a birthday morning where you we we're swapping scripts and I would get to read his new pages. I'm like, oh, what's going to happen next? I'm really excited to check it out. Yeah. And it always made, made things feel really fresh and fun. So. It's a, you realize how often your ego even gets in the way of writing right. or, or any kind of creative decision. Cause you might like an idea, pitch it to someone else. You know, I'll have an idea. I'll pitch it to Victoria. And she'll be like, I don't like it. And then I'll fight yeah, for it. it like that. I'll fight for it <laughs> only because I came up with it and I want it in there. But then, you know, uh, as soon as the next day or a week later, I'm like, why did I like that like that so much? I, I just <laughs> wanted that in there because it was my idea. And so, you know, that it that happens a lot. But over time, you kind of break that down and really just do what's best for the project. Yeah, I mean, choosing the hill to die on is the most important thing in any collaboration, right? But um, I can only imagine the amazing dinner conversations you all are having about horror concepts. So, um, guess, you know, one of the last- I won't let dinner, I won't let the concepting over dinner because I can be really squeamish. So I'm like, we will talk horror after I eat. The moment yeah. I'm done on my plate, we can talk yeah. about concepts. You just think so about it. Food. You just think about it when you're trying to fall asleep at night. Yeah, just <laughs> that's fine. That's the best time, right? Right when you wake up, before you fall asleep, the times when your brain is most aware and awake and not <laughs> keen to hallucinating any kinds. But, uh, and, but I, I, I resonate, right? My, um, you know, my wife works in surgery and I can't ever look at anything that's real gore. But the second I turn on one of my favorite horror movies, she's like, turn it off immediately. So <laughs> I understand the squeamishness, but I don't understand how it doesn't translate into her work. But nevertheless, 
my favorite question to ask filmmakers like yourselves is um, if you were to plan a program, a double feature with Bezel, what is the film you'd like to put either front end of or in back or in back of it? Doesn't matter the ordering more, just what film do you think is a good companion to go with Bezel? Who are we? And this isn't one of our films, right? This is like any film out there. It can the be world. any film you want. It'd be one of yours. It could be another film. I have a so I have a new a darling of my mind that I saw this year that I'm just absolutely in love with, and it's Oddity. So I would absolutely oh. love to see Bezel with Oddity. It just, I just think that they're both super fun, and I mean I'm biased on one of them, and then I love <laughs> I love them both. So uh, that's what I would pick. I think thematically this would go very well with Barbarian. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely got some Barbarian and some sinister vibes as well. Yeah. Um, and I loved Oddity. Um, it might be one of my favorites of the year. And I also must shout out, um, you all had my uh, my good friend, LeJohn Woods, in the movie. It's so great to see LeJohn. He's actually not too far from me here. That's right. Yeah, he's here in Ohio. <laughs> um, so so, so nice to see him. Treasure, yes. Oh, I love him. He's He was so amazing. His casting tape was so awesome. And then he also has these skills in stunt, like some stunt, stunt, stunt skills, which you know, we didn't need them too heavily, but he really did help uh, massage an area that we were going through where it's, you know, something pretty active and gnarly is happening. And he was like, oh, if we do it like this, that can really help flow the uh, the process. Right. So I just thought that- It was it nice was to see him on the other side of things too, because he was in the hangman, right? And he kind of was the hero. Yeah. And now, well, uh, I won't spoil it for anybody, but um, <laughs> he gets a good, he gets a proper ending, even though I, I <laughs> you know, love to see him stay the whole runtime, but nevertheless, <laughs> Um, I want to say thank you to you both, Aaron and Victoria, for taking this time. Again, um, Beazle such a great film. I'm so excited for folks to see it. We'll have our review up on our site shortly. And again, for folks watching this, you can catch Beazle in theaters. You should do that. It's uh, September 20th. This is a movie you want to see with people. It's one of those experiences. But if you can't, for whatever reason, you can watch it at home on the 24th. So you have no excuse. But thank you both. Looking forward to whatever you do next and uh, appreciate the time today. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. Really nice to meet you. Take care. Thank you.